This is the uh, November 26th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, we're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing later by our residents and the public. First item on the agenda is the minutes for uh, the November 13th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? They look good to me. Same. Phil, Same. look good to you? Yep. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve those minutes. Yes. Second. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. I was absent, so I cannot vote on those. All right. Next item, we have uh, three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $159,676, a payroll warrant for $106,524, and a payroll deduction warrant of $26,389. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, do you have anything? Yes, went to the big public uh, Frontier Union 38 meeting on the capital project where it was unveiled to the finance committees and the capital planning committee. We had several representatives from our finance committee and Dana from the capital planning committee. Mm -hmm. um, some suggestions were made and were uh, we're act, we're, are going to be acted upon, so there's going to be another little tweak to it, but basically uh, our town seems to be pretty in favor of it. So, mm -hmm. okay. Robert? You're in the right place. Hi. Robert? So I, uh, I went to an energy committee meeting, and we're going to hear more about that later in this meeting with, uh, with uh, Greg presenting a proposal for solar <coughs> here in Conway. That was a week and a half ago. And, uh, and I went to a conservation commission meeting. It was one of my first meetings, and we actually then had a, a house visit to a project. So I'm getting introduced to the conservation commission. Okay. And going fine. That was it for me. Okay. I had a uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association board meeting. Uh, I thought it went very well. That's our last meeting before the annual meeting in January. Tom was there with me, as a matter of fact. So that was that was my only meeting since the last uh, last time. Happy holidays. We won't last long. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? I think we might. Are you? We here? do. Are you yes, here? I am. Okay, you're our public for the, oh, for great. a public comment. That's really exciting. I just wanted to say hello to the Conway Select Board, and thank you for all of your hard work. Um, my husband Philip and I will probably be emailing you all a lot because we're in the process of applying for a medical, or a, sorry, a recreational marijuana business license. And I just wanted to stop in and put a face to the emails that you're about to get. Okay. And, your, and your name is? My name's Leah Bowden. Leah Bowden. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, for asking. I'm Phil Cantor. John I'm Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah, John. So, nice to meet you. And what, what we always tell to, to all of our uh, res residents that aren't that long in this town to p volunteer, be part of it. Yes. This is your brain trust, so you know we need all the help we can get. And um, I, I put myself on that list, like at the top of that list. But, um, so, yeah. That sounds great. We've been here almost a year now and just settled enough to have some time for that kind of thing. So, thank you. And we have a new resident packet that uh, you can be in touch with Lisa about too. Perfect. Yeah, it's nice to meet you and thank you for coming. Great. Thanks for coming in. Lee. So we were all truly shocked at the, the amount of money that Northampton took in. So. Well, maybe so some more money will come your way soon. I'll be working on that. We're hopeful. Well, no, some of us are hopeful. So. <laughs> okay. So Next item on the agenda. Uh, uh, no, that's no? good. It's Great. an open meeting. Oh, it's an open meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll stick around for a few. Sure. Okay. okay, next item on the agenda is the consultation letter for electricity aggregation, next steps, and the public review process. And I'll turn it over to Mark Capadonna. Mark. Mark Capadonna, Colonial Power Group, 5 Mount Royal Ave, Marlboro, Mass. Um, we had our call with the DOER. Things went extremely well, actually better than we thought. Everyone was on time. Um, the call lasted about 15 minutes. I was. And there was 14 communities on the on the call, so Great. Um, normally wouldn't go so smoothly. I thank everyone here for being on time. Um, 
that's that phase of the process is over. What does it mean now going forward? So Denise has spent the last two weeks com putting together a complete filing, which you have a copy of here. So this is going to go on with some just a, a couple of other um, small things on top of this. Uh, 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 you'll see a petition. I think it might be in here, actually. Yeah. The petition is in here, and then it'll just be a cover letter. That is the filing that the Department of Public Utilities will take a look at and ultimately give you an order on. So there's some bad news as far as timing goes. So everyone here has probably heard about the Merrimack Valley um, issue. That is taking up a lot at the Department of Public Utilities. We're in for a public hearing and they discuss the way things are being discussed right now. There's gas and then there's gas and then we're willing to discuss gas. Right now, because of the safety issues that are there, I know that's gonna be, certainly get docketed. Um, I think it went in today yes, to get today. docketed. So we, we did we did get this into the department. Mm -hmm. There is another, so every three years, uh, they call them PAs. Everyone hears about it, it's kind of called Mass Save. Every one of the utilities has a program. Mm -hmm. So those get filed on October 31st. There's a 90 day statutory window that they have to have an order out for. Mm -hmm. So most things are gonna get set aside so that they can meet that deadline of January 31st that orders will be issued for, for all of those PAs. So unfortunately, I think we'll, we'll get docketed and you'll pro more likely than not have a public hearing. But other than that, I don't think we'll see much out of the filing until Feb a February timeframe. Mm -hmm. Anything before then is a bonus for us. Um, I think we have discussed it in the past. I think we're trying to shoot, <coughs> we're hoping to be able to get out there for that July timeframe, which would be the summer <laughs> rates uh, for you. But that's our hope right now to be able to deliver something for that time frame. Do you need someone from the town to go to that public? Uh... Colonial will go, and the only reason I say is they have it conveniently located in um, downtown Boston at Cell Station, and mm -hmm. the one we were just at took less than two minutes. So I, I, you're certainly everyone is welcome to go. I, I don't want. I, I will go. Okay, great. I will go. <laughs> if you want to go? You want to go. <laughs> Anyone's we welcome too. We yeah. yeah. can all go. Absolutely, but yeah. I'm saying to you, we it will be. Anyone here for, anyone for against, mm -hmm. and they'll drop the gavel. It won't take five minutes, and all 14 towns will be. So let's submit this for all 14 towns, Correct. and they'll all sort of go through the process together. In lockstep? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we would expect, like I said, that public hearing, um, It will. It, I know it won't last five minutes. That, just given the distance, I don't want anyone to waste their time. There's no, it's a really non-event. Um, John, you've been who, to who, them. Who's the hearing officer? Uh, yeah. They haven't been assigned yet. Oh, all right. Okay. You'll, you'll okay. let us know the date, though. Oh, absolutely. oh, absolutely. It will actually be. We will publish it in the local newspaper, so that everyone. I just want to state, everyone's welcome to go. Sure. I'm not trying to sure. keep anyone away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just for an hour and a half ride there. Literally, the car will still be warm when you get back in it. <laughs> yeah. It's so, a pub, it's a public hearing. So right. Right. It's okay. Yeah. yeah I just it, it, that would probably be the only thing I think will would happen before that. I'll call it that February first time frame. So is Conway the first town you're out here giving this news to? Yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, we haven't met with I haven't heard from any of the other towns, that's right. Yeah, no, we, we so. haven't. Literally, it got filed today. Uh -huh. So most towns are just getting an email mm -hmm. this afternoon that it right. had Right, I, I told, we told everybody that it was getting filed, Yeah. Um, yeah. that it would be filed. It went to our attorney, took about a week, so everybody is aware and everyone got a hard copy. Uh, do you make 14 trips so. out is really what I'm wondering. Oh. <laughs> we, 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 we could make 28 trips. If people want us back out, we'll sure. come back out. Sure. I, at this point in time, for the most part, unnecessary, only because we don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of story to tell. Um, I can tell you one piece of good news. Um, we just recently signed a, a contract with the, the, the town of Leverett, and the rec market has, the mass class one rec market has sold off so far that they were able to get a 100% mass class one product that's below basic service. For the, wind? The, uh, or, uh, or, actually, it probably, we didn't require the, the um, to state, we just stated it had to be 100% mass class one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I'm going to assume that more likely than not, we're going to be dealing with wind, some anaerobic digest. The only reason I'm saying that is, I believe that there are some people in New Hampshire that are looking to move some um, anaerobic digester that was literally, um, this is old stuff that was still a mass class one. And that's class one renewable energy as defined by the state. Yeah. That's a correct mm -hmm. statement. But that has been, normally you'll see aggregations, five, maybe 10%. This is 100%. Right. Right? Their opt-in. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be their opt-in. 
what I will say is it's not magic. It's the re the rec market has sold off from what used to be around forty dollars to when they hit it, it was probably around eight dollars a rec. Mm -hmm. So it, it was. It's one of those things that they were able to do just due to market conditions. And that's the renewable energy credit. That's a renewable energy credit. So power is standard power, but they're backing it up with all mass class ones, whoever walks, mm -hmm. whoever decides to opt into that product. But it's mm -hmm. not something that's been offered prior. Only because the market, I don't believe, has been been viable. It, it, this years ago, it cost 19, 22 cents for 100 percent mass class one product. Right, right. And now that we have such an abundance of projects, that price has come down. So, do you think that will be true six months from now? Or um, there is nothing in the marketplace that's going to affect. I do. I, I, I. It will be slightly more expensive because they're buying, unfortunately, just the 19 rec, which is. I don't see anything in the marketplace that's going to hinder that. Um, Srex that a carve out of mass class one. Yeah, that's a deal. We are function that they get to play with, and there's a floor set to those. Yeah. But the mass class ones outside that, like you had mentioned, wind, right. anaerobic digester, things of that nature. There's just plenty out there right now, and, and the market is soft. And I don't see any way to put a balance back in place. For 2020, 20, the rec market is better. It's probably 12 to 15 right now. But for 19, yeah, yeah eight. Eight. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. No, and good for leverage. Right. Uh, very good. I mean, it's just timing. It's, it's one of those things. So at some point, I mean, and you'll be arranging this, I assume. But we'll want to get all 14 towns together to talk about for each of our towns what we want for an opt-in, you know, greener option. That's um, correct. And everyone will have their own choice of that product. Right. Right. So is, is it possible to have multiple opt-in products? Mm -hmm. it, it's very possible. Very possible. I, the, the only thing I'll say about that is you just, it's a wonderful thing if you can uh, get people to participate. Difficult to do. Uh, so not actual okay. data on the high end, you expect to have around three-tenths of 1% opt-in. So on 10,000 meters, you'd expect 30 customers. Mm -hmm. On the low end of around one tenth of one percent or ten customers, right. that's the participation right. rate that we're seeing in opt-in now. Uh, you Green, make that Greenfield, I believe, has two people mm -hmm. that participate in their yeah. their, their green <laughs> greener program. You know, in all of Greenfield, is a failure of public outreach. Mm -hmm. It could be. Well, in some of it, there's a better model now. If people are looking to do this, and pricing is still advantageous, mm -hmm. make your opt-out product your green product. Uh, the um, the town of Carlisle did this. Their opt-in product, their opt-out product, is their green product. But they they felt the fiduciary responsibility to say, I also want to have the ability to have a standard brown product for people that are on fixed income, low income, so forth and so on. So they made that the opt-in product is the standard brown product, which is actually a little cheaper. But they've moved the masses to the green product. We we may we can choose to do that. We'll, see, we'll have to see. And that's the beauty of the aggregation, yeah. right? Your choice. How much more expensive is the greener product at eight cents a rec? I, 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 do you remember? Uh, so I think the, couple of the mils. standard well was was ten three, and the other was eleven, 11 one. one. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, eight, so eight tenths of a penny, penny. less yeah. than a penny. Yeah. But, but like I said. Incredible, hundred percent, right? Hundred percent, right, right, right. But that was required by their select board. So, yes. Well, it's one of the things that they wanted to have as their opt-in, right? As long right. as it was below basic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they, you know, fortunate for them that the market was there. It has not been in the past. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, that's great news. It, it, it absolutely is. Good Two news. questions: Are we bound by the bylaw that was passed last year or the year before? If it was a bylaw, it might have been something else. A resolution? I don't know. Is does that have some bind no. saying that we have to do no. green, whatever? No, it doesn't. It's very open. What bylaw? It just says that the the town will will move forward with aggregation. No, no, no. There was like a zero. Oh. There was a zero percent. We there was an all renewable the resolution. Did, do you oh know, do yes. you remember what I'm talking about? Yes, yes, I do remember that. That, that, that was separate, and it's a resolution. It yeah, was there was a resolution, a resolution that said we, we would attempt to move towards towards 100% renewable. That's yeah. what this is, right? So that's uh, yeah. Be it resolved. Be good. But but that didn't force us to do anything. But right. but it but it does mean that the town supports it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
my other my, my, just one I, I just wanted to make a point the next time that I saw you, you that to to get a uh, I want to know what the out what your commitment is and what you uh, for outreach for public outreach and whatnot because the the thing that gets harder about this stuff anything that you need public particip every year where our information pro uh, gathering gets more and more fractured and and we everybody gets information from so many different sources and it gets more and more scattered every year and between you know it's not enough to just have one meeting and to just have one thing in a newspaper or one thing in the visitor it's repetition and oh you know and, <clears throat> and so I you know I, I wanted to get if we're doing this which we are I wanted to get participation like you know and that only comes from consent that only comes from being informed and um, which requires huge efforts these days so yeah and I don't know what your capabilities are as a town like at that time lots of towns now have a Twitter or a Facebook feed to push out information as well as on the web page wide open to meetings meaning and mm -hmm. happen to have as many as we'd like and we would send postcards to everyone is everyone that, would get a, a mailing it's yeah. right here in the filing yeah. everyone gets a mailing that's going to be enrolled individual mailing if you happen to have two meters at your house you'd actually get two individual pieces of mail as long as both accounts are on basic service so everyone gets something don't get me wrong <coughs> the most difficult part of the program is trying to get people's attention so, so what's your role in that besides mailings and well I'm, I'm as I said I'm committed to what if you think that in-person meetings is what works best here it's then I'm willing to have as many in-person meetings I'd as say the town. It's one of the triad triad necessary so triad what, what, what I would to wonder get if, if we, you know what I think you're looking at I mean if we could what would be great is if we could have an all 14 town meeting maybe a, a potluck or a or a barbecue on a Saturday, get all 14 towns together. Um, any of those things wide open, happy to do it. I, I kid you not, that, that's not a problem. I mean, all of our all. towns are exactly the same, you know, have the same questions, uh, you know, have similar populations. And I, I think just given the, kind of the nucleus around the FERCOG, if we can have them, our goal is all, what we have found has been most effective is inundation. And what we try to do is that 30-day window so you get an order and we go out to bid once once a contract signed we then have a, a window of opportunity depending on when the start date is on getting something in the mail if there's a facebook a twitter um, not only that but something in the local newspaper here so that if people are watching the, you know the local cable station they have it here as well and then absolutely if you wanted to do a you know a meeting i normally end up at the council on aging or something like that so that People that don't necessarily have access to the information, we're happy to go out and do those meetings as many times as you feel like it's necessary. Happy to come out and do that. You know, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one, sometimes it communities. That's not the way we want to go. Most of our towns are very friendly. I mean, I would think if we can have multiple town meetings rather than you coming out to 14 Council yeah. of Aging for 14, you know, uh, different meetings. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. whatever, whatever you want, it's your ag, and we're going to make sure that in any way we can touch the end consumer because that's our biggest that's our biggest concern that everyone that wants to know knows. What are the closest communities to Conway geographically that you're also working with? Uh, Ashfield, Colerain, Colerain. Oh, yeah. Buckland, terribly close. Shelburne. Buckland's yeah. close. Shelburne. Do you have a map? I, 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 <laughs> All yeah. the surrounding communities. Yeah, well, yeah, not Deerfield, Wait, not Waitley, Wait, not Goshen, not Deerfield and Waitley. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so those. Yeah. You have 13 in, in Franklin County. they got to be pretty yeah. close. Yeah, yeah. plus yeah. Huntington. Yeah. 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 Could be close. Yeah, so Deerfield and Waitley are Nashville's Sunderland. Yes. So the, those together with Conway are all part of the Frontier Regional School District. So we, we do a lot of things together. So that might be a good common meeting to have. And that's why we we don't try to cookie cut ourselves. This is what we're going to do. Not everyone has that kind of commonality. So we're more than happy to say, okay, in this scenario, we're going to have these four towns or these 14 towns come together on, a, 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 you know, a, a a Tuesday night or a Saturday morning for or a Saturday afternoon, whatever that is, to, you know, make it what, you, how you want to roll out your private, your program. It's it's not our program, it's your program. It's us helping you 
implement that. We're going to tell you what works, what we have seen work in the past. We used to try to educate early, and the, you're going to see the department could be really slow. And if you educate right now, you're going to lose people. So right, it's, right. Yeah. We should hold off. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I just it will be a. It's not that it's a wasted meeting. The people that want to know will hear the information. They might be waiting six months is the only problem. They're like, where is that? You know, that's what happens from time to time. So it is really great. Our energy committee, some of them are here. And, and you guys will hopefully help us do this too. Because some of the energy committees in some of the towns have been very involved in making all of this happen and pitching to the select board and, and are really pro. And so, so from the energy committee viewpoint, they'll be looking to get more people to want to opt up into a greener product. Correct. Um, you know, which is a which is a, for many of the towns is a big push. Yes, and that's what I hope we do. And, and possibly you can switch it around. It, it, it's mm -hmm. your call. Yeah. I, I, you know, if that's something, that, if the market is there, it may be something you decide to do. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Anything further? Any other questions? Thank oh, you, Mark. Only if if anybody is watching at home and you have any questions about what all this was about, call one of us and we can talk about it. <laughs> Great. So, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we'll see you again. Yeah. Look forward to it. Stay dry out there, will you? We're going to try. Right. 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 I don't know who's up in the hot seat now. <laughs> <laughs> Not very hot. Or maybe Mark Eden. Okay. Next item on the agenda, consider oh, the letter opposing expansion of the Chinese Immersion Charter School. Now, you may not have gotten a copy of it. I didn't get a copy. Okay, so here's a copy of it. There's a copy to sign as well. The original. Yeah. Um, All right, this is something we voted on a while back. Yeah. 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 Okay. Any questions? Has everybody read no, the letter? This was tweaked for the town, for our town. Yep. So. Um, the the uh, the deadline that they're receiving comments on this till December third, mm -hmm. so uh, if anybody has any comments to the proposed expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School, send them to Desi at Charter Schools at doe dot mass dot edu. Okay. Yeah. So I stuck on via electronic mail for that. Yes. Which I figured. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So oh, and there is a second page that lists a bunch of CCs right. mm -hmm. uh, as well yeah. in the original. Right. Yep. Okay, any other questions? No. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion that we sign the uh, letter to Commissioner Riley of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education concerning the proposed expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. Voices, second. Are, voices are op opposition second. to the expansion. Right. Yes. All right. All in, All in uh, favor? Yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can't forget that. All right. Yeah. And again, if anybody has any questions about what this was about, call and ask. Okay, next item on our agenda is the appointment as part-time administrative assistant for boards and committees of Alexis Federjanko. 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 How are you, Alexis? Please, have a seat. Thank you. Okay, any, any questions for Alexis? Thank you. Why do you want, why do you want this job? <laughs> Because I'm having so much fun doing it in Asheville. This ah, is like okay. Fun. Wow. Yeah, we're we're not that different. Yeah, we're more fun than Asheville. Yeah, we certainly are. are. We they, are. Uh, they all got copies of your resume and yeah. application yeah. materials, yeah. so they're familiar with your experience. And and we're very happy that you're applying. Thank you. Do you have anything for us, Alexis? Not if you don't have any questions. <laughs> I questions feel like almost like obligated if, if, you, if you don't ask questions and it's like you didn't read anything. But no, but no. I um, I think congratulations, welcome. And yeah, hope it works out for you. When do you start? So, uh, as soon as we do the paper. Uh, motion to appoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion that we point that we appoint Alexis to the part-time administrative position. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Alexis, thank you. Thanks thank for coming you. in. Really, have a good Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
can uh, maybe sign that somewhere. And, uh, read it with Lisa. Okay, next item on our agenda, the uh, Energy Committee. Next steps for cooperative solar. <coughs> Where's our Energy Committee? Bryce? We um, have a broken play. Our um, Greg Garrison of Northeast Solar is not here. Okay. And he's the one who's going to make the presentation. Okay. Um, I'd like to... Um, we, yeah, well, we, is, is he still expected? I mean, we don't know. It's 6.30, well, 630 we'll, now. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's let it's, All right, it's we can, let's bring we can we can hold off. Okay. Uh, are, are you expecting no him? Not expecting him? Um, I was. We don't know. Okay, are, are you still are you still expecting him? Okay. All right. Yeah. We could we could just we'll we'll just pass over that for right now. We'll come back to it. Okay. If, please, please. Come on in. You are you are, you are good. Um, can you give him a call or something. We'll be, we'll be great, so we won't go anywhere else. Hi. Hi. Please come in. Please come in. How many are here for this? We probably have about seven people here. Only six, the seven principal people side. Here. Yeah. It's like a school committee meeting. Uh, no, there, there are more chairs out there. If you can bring some more chairs in. I hope I'm not blocking it. So you please block. It'll be okay. <laughs> Can you uh, you can stay as long as you find it interesting or whatever. You can. Bless you. Uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, not today. You'd have to take a couple more days. It's not live. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, our next next item is the conservation restrictions for Sheehan and Robertson. Okay, Tom, what do we have on that? Uh, we have a boatload of documents. <laughs> we have Emily Boss here from the Franklin Land Trust to walk us through them. There are actually two different conservation restrictions, uh, so it's a little bit more complex than others. Uh, a, there's a larger parcel and a considerably smaller parcel. Mm -hmm. So if you can, uh, yeah, I'll just turn it over to Emily if you want to present the uh, sure thing. proposal. I'm very happy to be joined by um, various people involved with this conservation project. My name is Emily Boss, as Tom had said. I work for Franklin Land Trust, and I'm here on behalf of um, Elaine Peteroy, who's been shepherding this project, but um, had two meetings at the same time. <laughs> so I'm representing FLP for her. Um, and I'm here with Bill Sheehan and Katie Robertson, who are the landowners, mm -hmm. who some of you may know, and uh, Pumpkin Hollow. <laughs> they're right here. So if you have any questions, I'm so glad they're here to represent their and to discuss their desires for conserving this land. Um, and as, as had been mentioned, the land um, will be conserved and then it will be divided into two different portions which will be subsequently transferred into the ownership of two more sets of people who are also here, um, Steve and Jean Thomas, uh, and Jan and John Max. Both of whom live I'll note, we have one copy of all of the documents, John, right in front of you there. Uh, further, further forward. There we go. Just in, uh, in case uh, they refer to something that any, any of you would like. And yeah. they're all, we have electronic versions. Okay. <coughs> Yes, uh, well, I didn't think it was necessary to do three versions right, of the yeah. original documents, but right. so if you do want to look at them, we do have them now uh, printed out. So it is a kind of unique project, and it's wonderful. It really has a community feeling uh, for many reasons, partly because the area that's going to be conserved is one of the most beautiful spots in Conway. It's a real community center. Pumpkin, um, Pumpkin Hollow Brook crosses through the land, mm -hmm. and the area takes its name from that. Um, the land currently uh, has turtle habitat. There's a lot of people who take great care to, to help those turtles uh, when they're um, breeding um, right near the, the brook. And also it's <coughs> agricultural land um, and there's some discussion possibly of doing a small community garden on one of the parcels. So conserving this land will allow all of those things to continue undisturbed for the foreseeable future. Um, and we can have a map here that sort of outlines how that will occur. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's, the red outlines are the entire parcel, and then the, the northern parcel has uh, 
diagonal hashes along it. So that's one of the properties. Um, and then the open area is the second. So the upper northern part, um, that is the one that will be owned by Steve and Jean Thomas at the end. Um, mm -hmm. And it and, yeah, well, I'm sorry, Mary and Chris pay that these days. Right. That, that hatch parcel. So it's currently an agricultural activity. Um, on both the parcels, forestry, agriculture, recreation will still be allowed, um, but building um, homes would not be. On the northern hash parcel, there will be an allowance to maybe build a small building that's re related specifically to the community garden. Um, but the specifics are outlined in the restriction. It's just a 12 by 12 building that can be a shed or for storage or for convenience of the people who use that area. Um, and there's also on that um, one a house, which you can see on the, the other map, there's a house across the street, which um, currently it's septic. Uh, as an easement for septic exactly. onto the hatched parcel. So it's an existing easement. That the the leach field. It, it's, it's included in the conservation restriction. Mm -hmm. And there's also language for it being retired and how that would be if it comes to no longer be used. And it, if, it's, um, if there's any activity there, it would remain in the currently affected area so it wouldn't spread out or be anywhere else in the restriction. They don't make use of that easement right now, do oh, they? Oh, yes, they do. This, 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 their oh, yes. septic is in, is their, in it? Their uh -huh. leach field is is on that property. <coughs> wow. It has been for ever since we bought it. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. And the southern, you know, it's a small parcel that the house is on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of properties like that here and mm -hmm. there. So we're making allowances for current use and then thinking about the future. Um, so that's the, the northern parcel, which is 3.28 acres. Then the southern parcel is 6.3 acres. Um, and it doesn't have any allowances for buildings, but it does allow for um, management for wildlife habitat, for agriculture has been, has been going on, for forestry um, and uh, recreation and CNC land. So is there public access to the, will there be public access to these parcels? Um, both the restrictions, to my knowledge, retain the right of privacy, which means that current and future owners uh, have the right to say who might or might not grow on the land. So in most, in many cases, um, people, if they are not um, posting their land, they're trespassing, then people might cross the land. Um, is that the case right now? We've never posted this property. It's always been. People so, have walked in. So how, how is private property compatible with public community garden? With public community gardens, they would work out re relationship with people who were uh, members of the garden, presumably. We actually have one on land that's owned by the Franklin Land Trust in Plainfield um, that's maintained by a community group. And they check in with their, their members. They make sure that people are respectful of the property. Um, and so I think that would be something that would be uh, worked out by agreements with individuals. Well, uh, to answer your question, Joel. Um, what I, I made up a plan about what I hope might happen with the uh, this is a 3.2 acre property, and there were two things. One is a um, a community garden, which, which I remember you proposed years ago uh, uh, over there, right? That yeah, was, that was, yeah, yeah. Guess how many people I got out of Conway's 17? Yeah, two. But anyway, um, you got to keep going. Uh, so anyway, that was written into the, uh, I did a little map of, and some descriptors of what what I hope might or might not happen to the place. And the second thing that um, I mentioned, and this is just up in the air at this point, is, you know, when I was over, I was, I was in science and went over to a meeting in Scotland, and they had these uh, community walking paths that went through private and public lands and I thought gee wouldn't it be nice and don't hold me to any of this stuff it would be nice if we had a place starting at the ball field uh, walking through you know the, um, the pumpkin hollow stream either side and maybe perhaps going across Maple Street and the, uh, the high land there, not the marshy part. And uh, um, 
I've always thought that this would be neat. This this is way out there, and I don't want to bring this into this meeting, but uh, a community walking path. I see all sorts of people walking along the road, you know, with the dog, and the cars coming. Obviously, they have to pull them off. But uh, anyway, those are two things that I thought of, you know, when I considered, Gene and I considered buying this 3.2 acre property, so that's it. Sounds great. I encourage you to pursue those dreams. <laughs> yeah. Um, so does this take, what's the impact of this on our tax rolls? Well, let me just say something about the larger piece, mm -hmm. and that is that when we bought that maybe 30 years ago, and it had the house that John and Jan Maggs live in now on it. It had boarded up windows. The chimneys had fallen through the roof. There was not a kitchen in that house. There was not a bathroom in that house. There were trees growing up through the floor. So it was basically off the, the tax rolls. It was not on the tax rolls. Right. It's a little it nicer is today. on the tax <laughs> rolls in spades, thanks to John and Jan's. Yes. Yes. We mm -hmm. sold it to them for $25,000. I don't know how you have it valued on your tax rolls right now, but yeah. that property is back on the tax rolls. This part of this property is so, is damp, is wet. I'm not sure you could squeeze another house, housing lot, on there. But if you could, you'd really be working at it. So in my view, we've put this property back on the tax rolls of Conway, and we bought it to keep it open. When we bought it, we bought it to keep it open. So, so, so you never had the conservation restrictions on the property? No, they've never uh, been. Uh, you just... We bought it to preserve the open space. You were conserving it yourself. We bought it to yeah. preserve the open space, and we've owned it in that capacity for, you know, yeah. in this, in the case of this piece, for well over 30 years. In the case of this piece, when the Longs put it on the market, it was the town sledding hill, as far as we could see, yeah. and we didn't want the town sledding hill to be built on, and so we bought it. <laughs> and believe me, we're not selling it for what we paid for it. We're we're selling it to people who want to preserve it as open space. It's mm -hmm. what we bought. It for. As someone who whose aesthetic life is made better as a result of your choices, <laughs> I thank you. Um, so I don't see this as taking this property off the tax rolls historically at all. I see, that, you know, I see what has happened with this property, not what we've done, but what has happened largely because of John and Jan, as really having put it back on the tax rolls in a significant way. As a result of your stewardship, I might add. So I, I anyway, see. So everybody's being. I see cars. No, no. I, I, I tried to ask a really open question. Yeah. I'm not. You know. I, I, and I, yeah. I, I thought. Didn't, I thought I just asked what the impact of it was, and not yeah. without any judgment whatsoever. Right. I um, understand. No, and I know that's a consideration, but I, I think that what has happened to this property over the last, you know, 35 years has really benefited the town, and I hope mm -hmm. will continue to benefit the town. And um, I, I see at least 10. This is a random figure here people stopping, uh, getting out their, you know, digital cameras and photographing, you know, with uh, John and, and they've done, um, this is, you know, the sort of stuff that uh, New England sort of be made of, you know, they've done an impressive job. And We're artists. People have, no, people appreciate yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And the conservation of that rather than you know, having a McDonald's hamburger up on Academy Road or whatever, I think is really important. That's why Gene and I got into this and said, you know, we want this to, you know, be preserved. So. Yeah, I think this is a very natural fit to be put into conservation. It's also, you know, it continues that all the property across the street is preserved mm -hmm. space, and we're basically. Um, there's nothing really between this and the Conway State Forest, you know, in terms of mm -hmm. of paths for wildlife. And it's an amazing wildlife corridor. Yeah, and the, the stream is really a wildlife corridor, so mm -hmm. it, it has a lot of value, I think, as, as open space. Anyway, that's that's how we thought about it before we bought it. Uh, it it's my understanding it's, it still will be taxed if mm -hmm. at a lower right. rate, and yeah. a large portion of it is not buildable. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, any one project, especially if it's just a few acres, is not going to change the tax valuation of the town by a great percentage. Um, it's it's more or less the cumulative effect of of land which is not um, not fully taxable 
uh, at, at the highest rate, which is um, Conway's main problem, and of course state-owned land uh, is majority of that. Yeah. I had one question that's probably, anyway, in the documents that Tom sent us, um, there were some Word documents that described the restrictions. And in one of those documents, it talks about solar. Or in both of them, it talks about solar, but in one of those documents, the solar portion was highlighted in yellow. And I was just wondering if there was any, and I'm not sure which property it was for, but I was wondering if there was a significance in the fact, or, or if somebody had just done a word search on it or something, and then... It probably was text that had been modified. I see. It was still highlighted um, from that purpose. It wasn't highlighted for any... The same mention was in both of the documents. There's no solar other than on Steve's house that I know of. I, I don't know if you have solar. I don't, don't think there's so. No there's, no, there's no solar out there. And, and um, I do, well, I think that on conservation restriction land, I don't know, maybe you're not allowed to do solar, I'm not sure. Um, I know on, on Chapter 61 <coughs> land, typically, you can take a small piece out and do it, but I didn't know. Typically, if there's agriculture um, allowed, then you might be able to do solar that is supporting the agricultural <coughs> endeavor, uh -huh. but not for commercial purposes. Uh, not so for your home, not for egg. even your residence. Yeah, if there was that, and that would probably be an area that was set aside or specifically allotted yeah. for it. So that's why I didn't know if that was why it was highlighted in yellow and somehow there was additional text I wasn't seeing or something like that, but they look pretty much identical. But aside from house top yeah. stuff, I think um, any ground-based solar would severely blemish the aesthetic qualities that you know we're all trying to preserve. Yeah, here. right. So, yeah. Exactly. Great. Any other questions? Um, yeah, what's Franklin Land Trust role in this? We'll be holding the restriction on both par parcels. Um, we're accepting that uh, right now. And then we'll continue on with the relationship um, with the land for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. So we'll come out every year, um, check to make sure that everything is fine, give a call, let you know we're coming out. Um, and then it would be our role to notice and to work with any landowners who might um, not be living up to the agreement of the restriction. Are there restrictions on when it can be hayed or? How it gets managed that way? It doesn't. We don't drill down to that. We just make sure that um, best management practices are being used, and that the land is not going to be abused. Great. Up uh, in, in terms of my plot, a 3.2 acre plot, um, in my plan that I submitted, um, hang would be hopefully continued. Uh, we don't want it to get overgrown like some of the other places. Um, and, uh, there's about um, a half an acre of uh, fenced in garden <coughs> lot. Um, you, some of you probably know my garden. It's sitting on top of a, a leach field, which I guess is organic, but uh, I'd rather, <laughs> rather get it a little uh, different organic if yeah. you know what I'm talking about. A lot of nitrogen. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> So what we would like to request um, is for the select board to um, vote to approve and this restriction, um, and then sign it. There, there are two. Aren't, aren't oh, that's correct. Two separate. Sign, uh, approve, and sign each. Um, both of which are from William J. Sheen and Catherine Robertson. Uh, one of which is for 6.3 acres. One of which is for 3.28 acres. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Okay. It's an honor for the town's entire staff of uh, uh, tornado celebrities. I'm not sure they want that title. Uh, too, bad, too bad. But but anyway, I'll make a motion that we accept um, both of these uh, conservation restrictions as uh, presented here tonight. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Very good. So, oh, thank you. No, thank you. We've talked about this in the longs, Mark Long. Do you remember? I mean, how many years ago is that? Like, probably 35 years ago in their mm -hmm. living room, preserving this space. So it's just great to see it happen. It's wonderful. We're very glad to be part of it. Yeah. Well, it, yes, it is wonderful to have land trusts that are yeah. that will now that will work it. with us. Yeah. Yes. And, and and yeah, and oversee it and make sure it stays. But yeah, it's a real. It was a real dream of ours. Thank you. Thank you, Bill and Katie.
Well, Jan and John, thanks for coming in. Jean and Steve, thanks for coming in. It's certainly. So um, I'll, I'll have you sign. There's two restrictions, so I'll have you sign each. Yeah. And then it they need to be notarized. So mm -hmm. if I may um, get your identification from each of you, sure. I can just fill it out in the background as you go about doing your other business. Yeah. And uh, I've, I'm a notary. And, oh, uh, no. <coughs> and then I'll um, return them to you once everything's been copied and stamped. Uh, before before we leave, I'd like to thank uh, you know Bill and Katie for being such good stewards. I mean, they they could have gone a very different way with this land. But, uh, uh, I'm really impressed by you know what they've done. Here, here. Yes. yes, and we get to enjoy it every day. <laughs> Beautiful view. Mm -hmm. Some happy years. I only get to enjoy it when I go to the dump. A couple of times. <laughs> uh, you know, but I thought once to the town, don't stop by. Uh, that's right, regularly. <laughs> you, that's right. That's a beautiful. That's a beautiful piece of property. Pieces. Yes. The whole. Well, I'm talking about the whole thing. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll just come back to you with one more thing to sign in a little bit, okay. and then everything will be fine. And thank you so much. We really appreciate all the time you took and the, the good discussion. <coughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have you seen what the church is going to do? I'm just wondering if they talked to you just, about it. I don't. They've only taken I mean, down the church. Yes. That was kind of uh, that was terrible. Shocking. It, it was, <laughs> I, I know they have to, yeah. they have plans that they're that they're they working on. I and don't. January. They haven't shown January them already. The unveil. Right. They haven't shown them around. No, I haven't but, seen it. But it's so important to you guys. Yeah. 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 All right. So we need your signatures. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we get to talk about the conservation thank you. commission meeting. John, thank you for coming in. Good to see you. Pleasure, and thank you very much for it. Thank you. The barn looks great, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Good to see you. Okay, guys. Your house is looking great, too. <laughs> you and Gina. Yeah. yeah, like the solar panels up there. They're all done. Yeah. Finally done. Yeah. 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 Moving on. <laughs> Looks great. <laughs> Take your uh, contact information. So we're, you're still waiting? Um, I would say that he's probably been delayed with okay. the probably in Boston. You don't have a cell phone to call him? or? No, I wouldn't. You know, That's all right. We'll uh, reschedule it. You're here every two weeks, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll find out what happens, and once there's going to be another time, we'll pick one. Great. And I think well, it'll be worth, it'll be worth if, waiting. If you want to, if you want to wait tonight, that's fine. We're going to be here for another yeah. 15, 20 minutes no, no, anyway. I know I have access. I just need to find out. Um, I will. It's when I satellite. I might do this because you have one of these. Yep. Um, yep. Okay. You don't. And you don't. So this is what Greg was going to um, address. Can you give me an electronic version of that? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do that. Then you'll get it in color. Right. Yeah. Good for that. What? Then you'll get it in color. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to just talk about it now. I mean, um, I I don't want to steal Greg's fire. Okay. He's no, put an off, as you can see from his uh, presentation. He's put in an awful lot of work. Yeah. Um, he's made some uh, very interesting, I think, ground uh, changing uh, discoveries about what we can do with the town. Uh, participation in it, which was a good news, and so I'd like to reschedule when it's convenient for him. 
Thank all right? You. Yep. That's great. Thanks for coming in, Bruce. Not at all. Have a great week. Thanks, Sue. Thanks anyway, Sue. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, all right, so we tabled the Energy Committee. Okay, Tom, um, do you want to do your report on the fiscal 18 and 2018 and budget process for fiscal year 2020? Yeah. I put together some notes on the uh, the current span, including this year. Um, we have uh, uh, financial tables for FY18 um, for all of the budgeted amounts versus the uh, expended amounts. Um, please keep in mind that the balance to consider is what departments and committees might need in each category so we can avoid special town meetings for budget purposes during the year, mm -hmm. as well as providing for moderate emergency expenses. This also leaves us with the, the basis for uh, free cash. These are copies of that um, document. Uh, and, and these are just the totals. We also have detail sheets for, for each of the accounts, but uh, I figured this was enough. It gives you the percentage of the budgeted amount that was spent in the final column. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are, are uh, very close. Some of the ones that aren't close are actually ones that have very small budgets. Uh, right. Generally, they're coming in 80, 90, 95 percent of, uh, of budgeted. Uh, we're, we're very financially healthy. Yes. Um, we'll say that too bad. And are lucky <laughs> because of that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, I believe that the uh, current amount of budget overages is within reasonable bounds. No figures are greatly inflated. Uh, regarding health care, typically the highest budget overage. The treasurer always budgets for one extra basic plan and one <coughs> extra family plan, mm -hmm. as school staffing can change within a year. And again, we do school health care as well. And people might decide to switch plans. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, she believes that this level of prudence is sufficient. Uh, I believe staff has budgeted very responsibly over the last five years, and I expect this to continue. Conway is lucky to have such department heads. Uh, and as a side note, I found it amusing that the uh, Treasurer Collector's Office, four months into the year, or one third of a year, has this year spent exactly 33.33% <laughs> of its budget. It was actually pretty impressive. So I, I, I congratulated them on that. Um, uh, for this year, FY19 free cash, based partly on the budget overages for last year, but also uh, a lot else, uh, has been certified by the Department of Revenue as $438,000 plus. Three of the major factors in this high amount are receipts came in $83,000 over what was intentionally conservatively estimated. Uh, that included $35,000 in miscellaneous non-recurring revenue, about $30,000 of which was Medicare reimbursements, which we will not see again now that we have the revolving fund, and a $2,600 sale of property. Uh, also included in that 83,000 was 26,000 extra in motor vehicle excises, which we always substantially underestimate so that we can have a good free cash position. Uh, $9,000 extra in fees and $4,000 extra in, in investment income. Uh, also, there was a one-time amount of 67,000 plus from closing out old special revenue funds uh, about 30,000 of which came from the pipeline articles, which are no longer necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. And 15,000, almost $16,000 unappropriated free cash from the last fiscal year rolled over into FY19. These three items alone come to 166,000 more than uh, the budget overages, leaving 272, um, a more normal figure for free cash, though still up from FY18. $2,205,000 free cash amount. Mm -hmm. um, I 
originally set a target of about $250,000 for free cash, which I think is reasonable for uh, a budget the size of Conway's. I have started the FY20, oh, and uh, I have the free cash uh, chart for you here, but it doesn't say a lot, um, so which is why I broke down, which is why I had this breakdown in the, in the indented uh, paragraphs here. It's, uh, it pretty much gives the total and, and some other relatively minor items that were charged against our free cash, mm -hmm. uh, which it's, uh, uh, one of them was the overage in the, in the Germain Fund, which we used for mowing the cemeteries. We didn't realize we dipped below the uh, amount that we were allowed to spend in that account. We had the money in it, but uh, we're required to have a certain yeah, right. um, certain uh, amount as principal, and uh, I think we're going to have to make that up uh, out of this free cash uh, at the at the May town meeting. So uh, regarding the 2020 budget process, uh, I sent out a memo November 14th, and here is the memo I sent out. You roll all the department heads? Yeah. And this includes a, a timeline. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. what it's for, is yeah. for, uh, for people to know when deadlines are coming up, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is the process. Uh, basically just redid the uh, dates from last year. Um, I did ask them. Uh, oh, then I also sent out uh, on November 19th, um, the actual budget worksheets mm -hmm. and uh, I've actually started to get some of those back already. Uh, the deadline for that is uh, December 21st. Um, along with this I sent out a capital request form. A number of people were su surprised at receiving it, um, but I figured everybody should have an equal shot at getting it, mm -hmm. so I had to explain <laughs> what it was for to some of the committees that really don't have capital expenses, but uh, they are due December 14th, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll forward those to the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Uh, as you know, the Select Board typically has joint meetings with the Finance Committee for Public Safety, Public Works, and any other budget items requested by the Select Board, uh, and I'll be setting up other budget meetings as requested, so as I put together the schedule, please let me know if there are any departments or committees not scheduled that you'd like to meet with. School mm -hmm. committee. Okay. And right. uh, you want to get Just back? Just quick, I want to return your identification. Okay. School committee in the February. Thank you. And then I have, school um, committee in the February. Notary meeting, book. Whatever. If I can just have you sign. Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah, that's restrictions. right. Restrictions. Yeah. And I will fill out. I copied the needed information and we'll cop recopy it where it's needed. So if you sign. Where do you want me to um, sign? Right here. Yep. There and there. And then Robert, you're the next two, and then Phil, you're the next two. You've got these two. Okay. You don't want our full address. The, or, I you, oh, you got it. For, 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 the, for the first one, yeah. Just for I'll ease. I'll fill it out later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good seeing you again. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. So a lot of uh, figures and information in here, but uh, it, I hope it all makes sense and uh, you kind of understand why we are where we are. I would like to roll over as much free cash as possible. Uh, we do have a number of capital items coming that have been on the schedule for the highway department. Um, it, um, obviously the uh, capital uh, stabilization fund will be good uh, for one or more of those items. Yeah. And 
uh, the idea of um, rolling over free cash. It's it, it's a good idea. You, you'll see that we we rolled over um, uh, fifteen thousand, a little over fifteen thousand this year. I I would like to increase that substantially. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course that that'll depend on what the needs of the town are. Mm -hmm. um, I will point out that this is a a one time. Um, there's a lot of one time items in right. this, which yes. is why I I, yeah. I broke it out and. One of the reasons for rolling over free cash is that it's a lot easier for a town meeting to vote something from free cash. It, it just takes a majority vote rather than having it go into general stabilization sure. or capital stabilization or garage stabilization, each of which takes uh, two thirds, mm -hmm. uh, a two thirds vote to get it out. So um, the more we can roll over in free cash, the more flexible sure. the town's position there, is. There is a ratio that. Is it, what's the recommended ratio of um, free cash to total budget? There is a percentage ratio that's they, recommended. They talk about three percent, three to five percent. Yeah, it's it's a range. So you know. so what would that be if we're, the total budget is six and a half million? Well, well, three to five, three to five percent is is what about two hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah, three percent is two hundred thousand. And, and again, I, I've been I've been thinking in terms of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as yeah. a as a healthy which, free cash which figure, is, you know, basically four um, percent. Yeah. So. So my my own the, when I look at a budget like this, this is a snapshot, but to me it's more informative to look at it in the context of what previous years were, and is is mm -hmm. how long have we been doing our budget in this format, and is it doable to do a spreadsheet that would have this year's column uh, last year the year before whatever five years is really good three years is yes actually we, we we started work on that and some of that is in the long range financial plan that is on the web mm -hmm. so you'd be able to go three years anyway um, and maybe four I believe uh, in that document now um, it's uh, it's been a challenge uh, because they they switch software programs on the accountant side, so they can't uh, just um, create one report now that spans that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have those figures. Yeah, we do. And uh, I, I give them out actually to each department for the last three fiscal years as part of the budget worksheet. Uh, I have I don't have a single. Um, Master Excel sheet that has all the departments with all their past expenses. Um, yeah, that's just a question of the the value of of doing it for the town as a whole versus departments, which I have to do. Um, and then putting it all together would just be time. And uh, we have you know total figures that that's also easy to get for the town. Um, it, it hasn't seemed um, worth it to to maintain a, a, a single sheet since we do have the totals and we do have it by department. So mm -hmm. um, it's always possible. Yeah, it should be easier than that. It should, it should just be plugging in values into a spreadsheet without having to. Yeah, but looking in a whole lot of values. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have we have sub accounts for each of these as well, and that would be the the ultimate document. Mm -hmm. Very good, Tom. Very organized. We're looking good here. I, I love the I love the free cash number. Oh, that was unexpected. Well, you, you won't see it again for a while. We yeah. um, we will have uh, the the number that's going to grow uh, for FY19 is new growth, and that's going to be the all of the all of the build out the Comcast right. is going right. to be captured in that. Yep. Uh, again, as a small town without a lot of residential or commercial building, the only, the virtually the only new growth we get is when the utilities upgrade their infrastructure, and mm -hmm. that's very hit or miss. Uh, there are some very very dry years. There are more dry years than yeah. than otherwise. We've been lucky in the past few years that the the dam had substantial work done to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Verizon did a lot of work on the poles, and now Comcast has done a lot of work. Did we have people pay their taxes early? 
Oh, mm -hmm. last year for this year. We last had year some. For this year. Sure. We had some. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if some of that is, is accounted for or, or causing the. Well, we wouldn't. Like, like the high excise taxes or something like that. No. No, mm -hmm. we would, we would uh, sequester those funds. We, we, we couldn't spend uh -huh. this, you know, this year's funds last year. We can't yeah, spend yeah. next year's this year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Great. All right, next item on the agenda is sign of the Green Community's annual report. Okay. We have the annual report in front of me right now. Have you guys seen this? Um, it's no, not a final report. You, yeah, you got the uh, Excel yep. thing yeah. in, in that. You should have gotten uh, copies of several pages yep. of this. Yep. You it, sent it to us. Yeah, yeah, no, I meant there should be hard copies of the several pages for the Green Community Report. Did you make those? No. Oh, okay. No, um, well, we have one copy, I think, of all of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Run back and do uh, Not at this point. Um, these these are these are sample pages. The takeaway is that there were no changes from last year mm -hmm. <laughs> to to our plan. What there were the only changes to the annual report are the figures that uh, deal with energy use, yeah. uh, and that'll yeah. be the uh, the final page, I think. So that was that was the piece of the spreadsheet yeah. you sent us. Yeah, those are. Um, Did we buy any energy renewable? We're, we're doing energy efficient vehicles. No, we have. <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, all of our vehicles are exempt because they're either public safety or public works. Um, the Energy Committee, unthoughtfully, I think, it, it really, it was an oversight on their part, de uh, declined to buy me a Tesla with the. Oh. Uh, with the How green could they do that? Communities' money. How could they? Do so that? we have no fleet other than public safety or public works. I understand that the volts are pretty good. Volts, volts. Tesla's better though. Yeah, the Chevy's giving up the volt. No, just the hybrid. Oh, just the hybrid. Oh, okay. They're going all in on the electric. Mm. So the the first page is the sort of administrative page. There are multiple pages to this report. Mm, yes. Um, yeah. Which you can see in the electronic document I sent around. Um, so the first page is administrative. The second two are showing that we didn't make any changes. And the third one is after we uh, put in, uh, thanks to the FERCOG and their direct local technical assistance, um, uh, they managed to pull together a lot of data and enter it into Mass Energy Insight, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bear of a program. It's very powerful, but that means that there are a lot of moving parts to it. Yep. And, so uh, we are saving energy like we promised we would. Absolutely, yes. and that's what the last page is for. Yeah. So I, I wanted to be sure you uh, you saw that. If you if you want, I, if you want, I did the first this, the first two years of these for the community situation, so I'm a little familiar with. That. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion so, that we sign oops, the sorry. Green Community Annual Report. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Tom, so, here you go. So by signing this, do we get to apply for another grant now? Yeah. Yes. Now we get to apply for the competitive grants. Yeah. Um, and that had to be signed before the next time the select board meets for us to get it in, for us to submit it and uh, be in line for the uh, competitive grants. Um, that said, it, the, um, the range of competitive grants I think has shrunk since the program began. Uh, there, there used to be the possibility of actually funding renewable energy production and I'm not sure that that's still a possibility under the Green Communities program. Um, they may still be much more focused on conservation, which when you start off, they wanted you to do conservation first before production, mm -hmm. and uh, very sensibly. And uh, I think we may have um, done about as much conservation as we can do efficiently. Uh, there, there are other possible projects. It's, it's questionable how much we would want to spend on the on the town garage at this point but we could certainly um, beef up some of its its insulation 
if if we wanted to. <coughs> um, that said, um, there may be there may be other other possibilities, and uh, the COG is looking into those and is going to be working with our energy committee on brainstorming for other possible green communities projects. Would so they do things like air source ahead. heat pumps for mini splits in the offices here or in town hall? I'll find out. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's very cost-effective heating, and it's really effective in, the, in what they call the shoulder months, in the months before it's really, really cold or before it's really, really warm. Shoulder months. And you do get you do get free air conditioning then. So. Yeah, and we can make the transition to all LED lighting. Now that we've just switched over to the uh, <laughs> high efficiency fluorescence. Uh, yeah. You, um, you just did we, that now? Oh, we, we have to think about uh, the lighting in here. Things, but the, they, they, you know, heating, I think, could, could be improved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a possibility. Okay. Uh, we're going to table the next uh, item, I understand, the alcohol licensing for the current way in. So what's happened is. Um, Barbara is waiting on her fire inspection certificate, and okay. um, she, there was just some Does that have getting. Um, Chief Baker did his part. Um, right. Then they have to get Jim Hawkins to come and do his. Does, um, so does that have I, to be I, in place for us to do this? I would recommend um, moving forward. Um, and make the uh, final approval pending uh, getting getting I, that inspection I, because I, I we I actually so, have yeah. to get this thing submitted yeah. um, technically before the end of the month. Right. Right. So okay. They, they will in. forgive us a little bit if we let them know what's going on, but we, can then uh, sign it. we will work to get it done before the uh, before formal the deadline. Sign it now. So that it yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I would actually. Sign it now and, and then we'll have it in hand. Okay. All right. It's it's going to happen probably in the next day or two. So, so moved. All right. So, so, moved. so yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, we grant the uh, in in holder license to expose, keep for sale, and to sell all kinds of alcoholic beverages to be drunk on the premises. <coughs> this is for the Conway Inn. We also have a. Vicular license, common vicular license for the inn as well. Um, this, these, these are common licenses that we've approved every year. Um, <coughs> I'll make a motion that we approve these two licenses. Do second. I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Yes. And we're going to we're we're doing that uh, pending the. Uh, what license is that? Or it's, what? The, it's an inspection. The fire inspection, inspection okay. certificate. <clears throat> Any items on anticipated 48 hours? In the yes, actually, I had one. Sorry to say, um, Friday was noticed with a, a negotiated the first negotiating committee meeting for the uh, Union 38 Frontier teachers and IAs and everybody else is going to be tomorrow. Uh, so we talked earlier uh, last one when I brought this up last time about uh, uh, instructions, select board instructions. And uh, I wanted to just get that in writing so that I could pass that out. And so, uh, and so I prepared a little something. Um. Yeah, you should have a copy of a letter. You don't have a copy of a letter. What, what, uh, what letter are we talking about? A uh, copy of the letter. No, it should be in the yellow folder. It should be in the yellow folder. The yellow folder. There's nothing in here. No, that's not it. No, no, that's 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 separate. Uh, that's. I think this is actually another item not anticipated. That is another item not anticipated. Okay. okay. Uh, so that's. Okay, that's all I know. You didn't say that that's a version or something. That, no, because it's tomorrow and it's just going to hand it out. That's, that's not, not it. it. No. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Where'd they go? That's 
Yes, I saw it. That's it. Yes, that's it. We signed it already. We signed it already. Yeah. So, um, so that's it. That's yeah. that's my item. That's but, your item. That's it. Okay. But that that okay. That's, that's yeah. It's no. dated dated today. No, 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 no. That, that's different from the uh, no, no. That's the Chinese Immersion Charter School, isn't it? No, no, it's no, not. no. That's not okay. Well, a separate motion should be made for that. Yeah. So moved. <laughs> All right, this is a, a short letter. Let me, let me read this. Um, okay, this is addressed to the Frontier and Union 38 negotiating committees. The select board of the town of Conway hereby requests that the negotiating committee make it a priority to reform and renegotiate the current language of the relevant sick pay compensation and buyback agreements to provide a greater degree of budgetary certainty. We do not specify desired language or contractual remedies. However, we do wish to plainly state our desire to change the status quo so that we never again are in a position where one individual's retirement results in an unforeseen budgetary line item of $30,000 and endangers the passage of the entire budget. Okay. That's it. Well, that's what happened. That is what happened in the past. And uh, okay, I'll make a motion that we sign this letter. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Yes. Okay. It's done. Thomas. Okay. We have another item, Thomas. Uh, that's not anticipated. I'll take a copy of that. Yes, that's the um, the, the annual, annual heating uh, oil bid, heating and oil, oil notice oil to buy. There's okay. also a time uh, oh, the constraint there. This. Okay. So uh, and Ron has reviewed these. Yes. And he's recommended that we sign them. Yes. This okay. is uh, our contract with the Lower Pioneer Valley Educational right. Collaborative, which yep. does the bidding for our fuel oil and our diesel, and has gotten us. Um, the best deals around that I can tell. Mm -hmm. They uh, they actually managed to out negotiate the cog, so mm -hmm. that's good. Well, I think they're dealing with a larger pool. Yeah, they they've been doing this for uh, many years, so they they have a very large pool of, of school districts and municipalities, and they they usually have the best uh, the best bids around. Um, I'll make a motion that we sign these both for the. Um, the diesel oil and the heating oil. Do I have a second? Second. Thank All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, just to be clear, this is both a um, a a buy offer um, at a particular price and a an authorization for them to act as our agent in buying it. So there's two parts to that. Two parts to two. Fuels. That's why there's so many little stickers there. See, this is really good for me, just because at, from in the school committee, uh, we we the frontier, I, I believe last time did its own bid. Frontier and Union Three did their own bid, hmm. did uh, their own RFP and their own bid, and they I do not believe that they were part of this system. Hmm. Um, and I, I believe this also just requires your signature, John. Is that right? It does. It's just one, one, one It's spot. good to know. I will remember this. I'm not sure why Frontier isn't part of this, because this bid is the best every year. Yeah. As I say, they have, they have a whole lot of school districts and a whole lot of municipalities participating. So they get a good price. Tom, do you have an update for us? Yeah, relatively brief, I'm pleased to say. Well, there was that Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, in committee news, the next meeting of the Highway Facility Committee will be Wednesday, December 5th at 6 p.m. here, and we'll focus on procurement. 
Andrea Lamas, Town Administrator of Buckland, and Andrea Woods, no. Chief Procurement Town Officer of the Hug, will be there to discuss any and all procurement issues related to designing and building a highway facility. So anyone who has questions about procurement is most especially invited. Okay. Uh, in departmental news, the Conway Grammar School is planning to have the water tank relined by mass tank inspection starting December 21st <coughs> over the winter break. Uh, it'll actually be drained the 21st, which is a Friday, and they'll come in the 22nd um, due to continued taste and odor concerns. They're our water consultant, Michael Blaine, uh, is notifying state regulators of the proposed plans. Can I, can I ask you some questions about that paragraph? Yeah, yeah. So, um, because this is your, your, you're like heavily involved in this part right now, right? Uh, not as much as Bob Wesco. Okay. He, Bob's the lead on this. All right. Um, yeah. What, what, when I, because th th there was a Conway School Committee meeting, I, I didn't talk about that, and the meetings that I went to, but um, I was trying to get a, 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 a handle on what the cost is going to be and what the can, what where's the status of the negotiations with them about what they're going to pay or the bottled water, the tests, the uh, all, all the out of pocket expenses that we've had to incur, which we don't quite know yet because nobody has submitted a bill. Um, mm. But uh, that I'm, I'm trying to get where's the budget? Where's oh, it going to? I'm that? sure they're insured for things like this. Well, uh, we that's, we have not paid the initial bill, and that is what um, I would intend to um, pay. And I would also I believe they're also expecting to be billed for uh, the bottled water that they've been using. I don't know what other incidental costs there are, um, but I know doing, that they're doing water tests is expensive. Yeah. Oh, the water test. Yeah, that's the other one. That's the other main. Yeah. So, do, do we? Do they know why this happened? Uh, yes. They and do. and so okay. do we. And uh, they're not saying, um, <laughs> but they're going to redo it all. So. Right. But why did it happen? Um, to begin with, my firm belief is that their proprietary cleaning solution. Uh, which they, they spray the whole tank out with, mm -hmm. did not completely dry by the time they installed the liner, which is a spray-on um, product. And that because the cleaning solution that they use, I believe, contains solvents, which are designed to dissolve things, right. because it's such a very good cleaning solution and therefore dissolves many things, I believe that there were parts of that that leached through the liner, the liner. and that that's... You mean it was dissolving the liner? Yes, yes. basically. Yeah. That's what, that's what so, so here's the thing about all that. So, because um, I've, just in the past week, have reviewed all of the documents in the school's possession regarding this whole thing. And because um, I'm concerned going forward that we, we, we have to be able, as the school, as a town, we have to be able to pin this on... The t the, the, it's one thing to say we all know, but when I looked through all of the documents, there was not a single letter or email or note from any actual scientist saying this is why this happened and it's this tank company's fault. And if you're going to expect that, if the idea is to get them to pony up the dollars, you need something about causation. You need something from somebody. We got a consultant, and I. I I, I tried to get an answer to the question, was he ever asked to provide something in writing saying that, and I don't think he ever was. Yes, they so, were asked. So. Um, they declined, but they have also indicated that they're going to reline it and that, and we're holding the purse strings. So they're, so accepting, they're accepting responsibility. Yeah, they, they are well, definitely accepting responsibility. But this, uh, you're wondering about all the other costs. They, they offered right away to reline it. Actually. They did. Let's just come in and do it over, they said, yeah. And we haven't paid them, so if they want to assert that it wasn't their fault, they will have a very steep requirement. Well, I I, I didn't quit. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm putting together a file to get somebody else to pay for something, I'm wanting something in writing saying it's their fault. 
and um, I don't see what the what the problem and why our consultant well whatever um, if we have a consultant worth the money that we're paying him so so well that's like, that's yeah that's the water quality consultant uh, we're I I don't think that that we're going to pay them more than what we we're going to pay them for we're getting a twofer installing. we're getting a twofer it's a it's a contract in, in the in the first place it's a contract and they, we'll they have to perform certain duties and yeah. they do it just yeah. during christmas vacation and the yes. work is done yes they they and they worked all that out we made the uh, arrangement with them and and i believe that because they know that it was a rush job and that's why it didn't work they are going to take another day or two and it will this time not suffer from that problem okay. Uh, okay. I, I did my best to identify all the concerns that I have okay that's yeah. good we're uh, <laughs> thank you Todd we're good no um, I, absolutely I agree oh yeah let's put it this way I wouldn't expect this select board to give them any more money <laughs> no <laughs> uh, uh, I have signed up for a procurement class for next week, Monday through Wednesday. This is the first in a series of three sessions to get my full certification as a Massachusetts Municipal Certified Procurement Officer. I came to Conway with the associate levels. I had not yet worked, uh, actually it's five years, I hadn't worked five years um, in uh, municipal procurement. And finally, so you get to put um, CPO after your name. MMCPO. If, if I ever had occasion to, that, that would. Um, actually, the town of Conway has named me its um, chief Mun procurement officer, yes. so CPO. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean that uh, I'm up to date in the training, though. So, <laughs> so <laughs> We'll get that training, Tom. And, then this, the, and in the last five years, a whole lot has happened in the world of procurement. Yes, it has. Uh, and finally, John Gould from Senator Hines's office will be holding office hours in Conway on December 12th from 11 to 1. That's Wednesday. He'll be at the town hall from 11 to 12 and in this town office from noon to one. All Conway residents are invited to meet with him to discuss state issues. Okay. Are, are we gonna have anything for him in terms of questions we have, do you think? You, th this, is, uh, this is very yeah. much a free for all and a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I got some issues with him. <laughs> you, I'll okay. Talk, I'll talk about him with some issues. Okay. But uh, I'm in. just wondering why he would feel the need to walk across the street halfway through his uh, two-hour uh, ah, embarkation. There's a uh, there's an event. Ah, the, uh, okay. chair yoga. Oh uh, yes, we cannot oh, chair, yoga. chair yoga. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. <laughs> now, so this is a, a one-time event, or will he be here every so other many year, months, or <laughs> yeah. Or, well, uh, this is this is one time for now. They, you know, they're rotating through the district. Yeah. yeah. If nobody comes and talks it's to them, they won't, won't be coming back. Okay. Oh, Thank they'll you. they'll come somewhere. I, you know, this one may be, you know, they they may be publicizing it in in the surrounding towns as well. We'll be in Conway, and next time they may be in Buckland or Deerfield or mm -hmm. something like that. Thank you, Tom. Select board comments. Do we have any comments from the selectmen? Not hearing, down. not hearing any. Okay, uh, we'll go on to the next item, which is mail. Okay, mail. Uh, we got two letters from uh, J. Ash, uh, and unfortunately, we were not selected for the 2018 round of MassWorks Infrastructure Program grants. One of which was for the Village Center wastewater collection and leaching project, and the other was for the uh, Shelburne Falls Road project. So essentially, um, all those, although these have been rejected in this round, we can always put in for them next time around. So, 
we also received an annual report from the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Um, and it goes over um, housing consumer education, uh, property management, uh, some of the things that uh, happen here in Conway. Um, uh, CDBG funded housing rehabilitation projects for fiscal 2018 and Conway has um, two of those. Uh, Tom, we're going to put this uh, on our website. We could. I think. Sure. Okay. Just so people are aware of what, what this organization mm -hmm. does for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they have uh, very quietly funded many projects, many housing rehabilitation projects in Conway. Yes. Yeah. Well, those are, those are confidential, so... Okay. Any announcements? No announcements. Okay. Our next meeting is uh, Monday, December the 10th, here in the town office at 6 o'clock. And now um, we will go into an executive session uh, for reason six to consider the lease of the sheep barn at 40 Fournier Road. Uh, and we will adjourn from executive session uh, and end our whole meeting, open the open session from the executive session. Sounds like a motion to me. Yes. Uh, do we have a second? Okay. I, I, I would tell. second it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Got to do roll call. Yeah. Yes. 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 Aye. Aye. 